All right, guys, welcome 2021. And our, for our first video this year, we're going to go over the Maumee River. Um, so Maumee River, it's everyone knows if you're from Northwest Ohio, it's it is the main river. It's actually the biggest river um, located in the Great Lakes for watershed reasons. Um, it stretches from Indiana in Michigan down into Ohio. Uh, it's it's made up of four separate rivers. You got the um, Algilles, St. Mary, St. Joseph, and Tiffin. Um, they all they all run in into that river into the Maumee. They make the Maumee, and there's different there's different sections of the river that make it uh, more suitable for different activities. Um, so it's not just you know you you take a big boat here and and you can you can't do anything else in this section of the river. Um, or you take a small craft and you can't you can't do certain things on certain days. Um, it is like that sometimes depending on water level, but a lot of the times there's certain stretches of the river um, that you can do multiple things. And that's what we're going to go over. We're going to go over a big introduction in this video of uh, the areas that I usually fish, um, the areas that I do recreation, and um, then we're going to transition into like the the smaller areas, and then later on in the year, when the weather's more suitable, we'll go into we'll go more in depth into those areas. Um, so just to start out, saying that I do I do not fish uh, very far west of of the in the Maumee past Grand Rapids. I fish down the the 109 bridge, um, so that's you know seven miles past um, Mary Jane Thurston State Park. We'll go over that, but uh, that's as far as I've been. So there's a lot of a lot of fingerling uh, creeks and stuff that are past that that lead into the river that I personally never fished, and I I know for a fact that there are a lot of my friends that do fish it, and there are giant fish down in those areas, including the dam down in Defiance, and um, you know the the feeder creeks where you know you're gonna find like your big your big flathead catfish. Uh, some people who catch pike in Indiana, they've actually caught um, some muskie that have come out of reservoirs that have been put into the river. So let's get this thing started. Um, to start off, that was a picture of the mommy. So here's here's what the watershed actually looks like. Um, you can see the cursor here. Uh, so right here is Lake Erie. This red area is Toledo. This r red area over here. Um, where the St. Mary's runs in, that's Fort Wayne, and you know, that's where the river actually the river actually starts. All these feed into it. Uh, I forgot to say the Blanchard. The Blanchard does feed into it uh, on the on the south the south side when it runs into the Aguilies, and I believe that meets up in like Ottawa, and then it flows up into the Defiance area. So you got Defiance right here, and then Napoleon right here, and then Waterville. Um, everyone, it's just outside of Toledo, and then you, you're running, and then when you get past uh, the Perrysburg area, that's when you're going to get into your deeper water, but we're going to go over that here in a second. So this this is from, I believe, so this is Ant Antwerp down here in the bottom left corner. That's actually almost to the, the Ohio-Indiana line, so this is taken from a DNR website, and then these are all the the parks and public access areas that you can that get to get you into the river and there's a there's actually a lot there's a lot more than this um you can if, if you're driving along the river you're actually going to find a lot more public access areas that you can get down into that not a lot of people go to and um a lot of good fishing a lot of good the feeder creeks um underneath bridges and stuff like that it's it's excellent fishing so usually what i was talking about where i usually fish from um you're talking about, so here's Mary Jane Thurston right here. So here's Napoleon. So the 109 bridge is like right here. It's hard to see where my cursor is, but it's like right there. And that's here. That's about, it's about halfway between Grand Rapids and Napoleon. It's a, on my boat, it's like a 20 minute ride down there because I run a 25 horse. So. These are your public access areas that you can get into. Uh, you can find those on the Ohio DNR website, the um, you know Wood County Parks, uh, Lucas County Metro Parks. Um, that's how they're they're listed in different colors by what part um, you know DNR and stuff like that. And you can see Metro Parks and stuff like that. 
So on to the next one. So the river from, let's say, from the 109 bridge down to Mary Jane Thurston State Park, that's a, that's a deeper section of river. Um, that's above the second dam. The first dam, when you come into, that when you come into Ohio, uh, that's the that's the Independence Dam. That's in Defiance. The De, then Defiance, the river runs from Defiance to Napoleon, and there's actually a towpath trail that runs on the north side of the river uh, that you can actually take like a bike or you can actually walk that. Um, but that stretch of river, basically from Defiance all the way down to. Um, Grand Rapids until the Providence Dam, which is this dam. This is the South Side Dam. Uh, it usually runs between like eight to nine foot deep. Um, there are some there are some public access areas in that area, but in that area you're gonna you're gonna find that it is still a rocky bottom. There's gonna be tons of tree lays downs on the on the side. Uh, that's where people are. You know, you're gonna go flathead fishing, you catfishing, uh, carp. There's walleye underneath bridges. You got crappie. Um, and that's where your bigger boats are going to be. You're going to find your pontoon boats. You're going to find your jet skiers. You're going to find, you know, like your deep V. You, you can get, you can take a, a Pro V Targa out there. You can take a Monarch out there. Um, you can even take, you know, like my boat, I run a Mod V. You can take that out there, but uh, with the water being deep, most of that area, and it's wide open, there's nothing that really stops it unless you're on the edges. Uh, when the wind picks up, it can get it can get pretty nasty out there. I mean, last year we had white caps, so it gets pretty deep. It can get nasty if you're on a small boat. Uh, you have to watch for stumps floating down the river, and um, you know it's 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 a good stretch of river for like for family activities. Uh, you pontoon boats they park on the side. There's sandbars um, and, and stuff like that. So it's it's mud. There's shale. There's boulders. You know, and then, like I said, there's laydowns along the edges. You're going to find your, your campgrounds, your campground marinas, the state park uh, is up there. So, it's like I said, that's where you're going to find a lot of your bigger boats. But the fishing up there is still excellent. There's all kinds of, um, you can get, you can catch fish uh, basically from, you know, if, you, if once ice is off, all the way to ice on, you can catch it in that section of the river. So, right here, this is the south side of the dam. This is uh, on the Grand Rapids side. Um, so this is the Providence Dam. Uh, down here, or below the dam, that's that's basically all all shale, shale flats, shale rock. So basically, what shale is, it's like the that flat rock that's on that uh, you can actually walk on, and there's like cliffs to it. So it's like it's like bent down, not bent down, but it's like sheared off. And so like if you're walking, you're walking on the shale rock, and you lose visibility, you can drop down. You know, you, you could be you could be ankle deep, and all of a sudden you're like eight foot deep because you fell into a hole. Um, that's what a lot. That's basically what down from the Grand Rapids Dam on the south and north side of this island. Uh, I, mean, I believe that's Woodtick Island. There is it's it's all shale all the way that back down till basically until you get down to Perrysburg. Um, so you, all the rapids and stuff. You you're walking on shale. There's boulders in the wall occasionally in the water but that's what you're walking on um, that makes it easy to river walk you get a lot of activity river activities you know kayakers canoers they put in usually right here because there's a good set of steps uh, they put in here you know you got waders out there fishing uh, me personally I like to walk out on the shale or I get up on the dam and I walk across uh, it's excellent fishing down here basically from the wall I run all the way up to ice on um, you know, you got flatheads, you got channels, you got um, buffalo carp, you got regular carp. There's smallmouth bass in there. I've caught largemouth bass down there. Um, like I said, like I said, carp. Uh, there are some bluegill down there. There's a picture later on I'm going to show you in this presentation of people catching musky down, not musky, um, sturgeon. Someone caught a sturgeon down there, but it was like 20, 20 years ago. But they they do. There are sturgeon in the river. There are sturgeon in Lake Erie. If you find something in Lake Erie, you might find it in the river. The sturgeon are hard to come by. Uh, muskie are hard to come by. It's not It's not what it used to be um, from the stories you hear from people that, you know, like old-timers who fished the river between, like, 1930 and 1970. You hear all kinds of crazy things um, about things being dredged out and everything like that. So this is the north side, and that's an example right there. Uh, that's a... That's a good picture of uh, the shale. 
out there in the middle. Um, that's a good picture of the shale. You can see the broken shale coming across here. There's actually a pretty deep hole that a lot of people will fish right in this area. Uh, right here, down in these corners, you catch shad for you know your catfish bait um, and stuff like that. Uh, basically, the dams, when the water is low, it's a good place to take the kids. Um, good recreational opportunity. Uh, and actually starting at, on the north side on Providence Dam, there's the towpath trail that runs the north side along Old 24 all the way into, all the way to, to Waterville. Uh, I believe that's like seven miles or so. Um, that runs all the way alongside the river. So that that's excellent fishing opportunities too. Um, there's multiple parks along the way that you can park, park at uh, to go fishing and stuff like that, sightseeing. Excuse me, bird watching. Uh, I mean, you name it, people do it. There's uh, kayaks, pontoon boat, small pontoon boats that people put in, uh, canoes, and all that kind of stuff. So this is the north side. This is the this is the larger side of of the the two sides. Um, I rarely fish this side because I like to fish the south side because I know the holes a lot better. But I am starting to fish the north side a, a little bit more. I did more this past year than I did. Um, in basically my previous life. So this is a picture of the of the of the sturgeon that uh, someone caught. I think I believe the internet said it was 1997. This person caught on this on the south side of the of the dam on the Grand Rapids side, not the Providence side. Um, so they they there are big fish in there, few and far between uh, for of a rare fish like that, but. Um, the the Toledo Zoo work with Ohio DNR. Um, they've actually reintroduced sturgeon into um, the Maumee River system, uh, and they've actually uh, I can't think of what that word is. They've actually uh, found some of the of those fingerlings out in the lake, and they've measured them uh, because they've been tagged, and they uh, they have grown quite a bit. So there's there's a good chance that. Um, you know, the sturgeon may, may come eventually come back into the Maumee River, but um, I guess time will tell on that one. So this right here, uh, I, the bottom is cut off, but that's Grand Rapids down into there. Up until this is going to be Waterville up in here. So you have all this, this stretch right here. Um, this stretch of area is where a lot of people are going to do, um, you know, their recreational stuff. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna put in at Grand Rapids, and a lot of kayak services that that are along the river they put in right there. So you got uh, Grand Rapids down to Waterville. Um, they pick people up, and you know they take them to certain stretches of the river. They pick them up from certain stretches of the river, and they do a lot of kayaking, a lot of canoeing. And there's actually a, a stretch of the river. I believe it's uh, between Van Tassel. And at Seagull Park, that really nobody can get to because there's not a boat ramp in between um, for like smaller boats like mine. There's there's not a there's not a boat ramp that you can get into there, and uh, so the only people that can really get into there are canoers and kayakers. And I am a an old timer has told me that back in the day that there used to be a good population of um, northern pike and muskie that lived in that area across from if you know where Nazareth Hall is uh, across from Nazareth Hall. In that area, um, there, I guess there's a big hole in there, and they used to catch pike and muskie out of those holes. Um, but I've never fished that stretch because I can't get to it. I would love to someday, um, but I cannot. I cannot speak to that. I've I've, I've fished at Seagull Park, and I have fished Van Tassel. I like at Seagull Park better. Um, so basically, at Seagull Park, you're gonna there's a there's shale shelves. So on the water's low, you walk out on the shale shelf, and between the shelves. Uh, that you can walk out on. There's actually big holes that you can that you you walk out on. You can fish those holes, and there's and those holes hold big fish. Um, excellent place to take your kids because uh, you can walk out to the islands. You can go out there. You can see um, like the birds, the migratory migratory bird birds that are out there. Uh, you can get in the summertime when the water's really low. Uh, you can basically walk all the way across the river. It's excellent. Like I said, it's excellent for the kids. It's excellent to take the dogs. Um, it's just, it's all around a great time. So then when you come up um, to, let's see, right about, I believe this is it, right about here. 
that's wires that's wires rapids um, it's the same thing it's a shell shelf that runs all the way across uh, at the bottom of the rapids on the south side it runs like four to six foot deep um, on the north side it's like it starts off at like 10 and it drops down to like four foot in that area and in that area you know you're catching you're catching smallmouth you're catching uh, sheephead you're catching uh, flatheads channels um, carp uh, white bass walleye um, I mean you name it it's 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 there um, if you if, if if basically like I said if it's in if it's in Lake Erie there's a good chance that you will find it within the Maumee River river system um, you just have to know where to look in certain areas and you know it's it's basically you know just stuff like that um, actually if, if you ever go fishing with me at Wires Rapids if you ever want to go fishing with me at Wires Rapids uh, there's actually a really big hole um, that I was shown to by an old-timer and uh, my di my father actually pulled out um, a 42 pound flathead out of that hole which was one of the best times I've ever had because he actually pulled out on bass gear so like you know eight pound mono on a spinning reel and he had we ended up muscling that thing in on I think it was like seven o'clock on a Saturday morning which was pretty awesome um, so yeah, basically, from there, from Wise Rapids down to the old bridge in Waterville, which I will show you a picture of here in a little bit. Um, basically, that's all shale too, with boulders and rocks. As the as the river level changes, uh, it does get pretty shallow. And back in the creeks between these islands, it gets shallow in those creeks. It gets shallow in the middle of the river. Um, I've actually got my boat stuck on on a rock in the middle of the river. So that. It kind of tells you how shallow it gets. You like, you have to know, you have to find your line, and then plot your line on like an app on your phone, and then ride that line almost every single time, or else you there's a good chance you might get a boulder. You might catch, you know, you might catch a, a, uh, like a big tree branch or something like that. So you ride that line, and you know, you just you kind of just hope for the best. But a mob D like my boat, you know, I plan in like six inches of water. So even even planning in such low amount of water I still got stuck so that's how shallow it can get um, and it can be it can be like frustrating but uh, when you come when you come to the north side of these islands right here you have the old um, the old bridge and that's all shale too you can park you, when it, the water's low you can get down into there and so here's just a picture of the river uh, this is as it's getting lower in the summertime you can see the the grass starting to pop out of the river and that's an example of the shale flats as you can walk across it um, basically you know you're you're walking in maybe ankle deep water all the way across there will be deeper spots so you just you know you just kinda gotta be careful be mindful and this is the old bridge I was talking to telling you about and this is the shale uh, it runs all the way through here um, the name of this bridge I I can't say it it's like Roche de Boeuf or something like that and um, basically, this is an excellent, excellent place in the summertime to take your kids smallie fishing. You know, the smallies they sit at the bottom of these the bottom of these shelf rapids, and, you know, and they're sitting there waiting for ambush on anything that might come through. Same thing with small channel cats. You can throw an inline spinner, um, you know, like a mimic minnow or something like that, and you're gonna you're gonna catch a fish dang near almost every cast. Uh, it's like a, like I said, it's a great place to take your kids. A lot of people when they go kayaking, they pull up on the shale. You know, they eat lunch. Um, we pulled a boat up alongside, and the kids have played in the water. Because uh, it, it, like I said, it runs it runs shallow. You just got to be careful with the current. Um, and you know, it's it's extremely fun. It's extremely fun place to be. So then this stretch, um, yep. So this is going to be the wall I run. Everyone knows the famous wall I run. The thing to know about the wall I run is that it just, they're not just going to stop from, you know, when they get to Jerome Road Rapids to Perrysburg. They're not just going to stop there. A lot of people, I mean, that's where the most people access them. That's where a lot of them are because that's as far as they come up because they don't want to come up that, you know, that second, third, fourth set of rapids when they come into the river. But the walleye... When the when the water raises up, they'll run all the way up to the dam in Grand Rapids. Like when you stop at Farnsworth Park, 
You'll see them spawning along the side of the along the side of the big dock. You'll see them spawning at Wise Rapids. You'll see them spawning over at Van Tassel. Uh, you'll see them spawning at, at Seagull Park. You, they run all they run all the way up to the dam because that's as far as they can go. Um, so to be mindful, if you're if you don't want to play with the crowd down there because you know there's thousands and thousands of anglers that come down there, just go down towards the dam. Uh, there's a good chance you're gonna catch some walleye as you as you as you spread out because um, you know it, everyone everyone gets so frustrated with everything um, with all with all the congestion that there is. So basically, the walleye run it's all shale, all boulders. Um, you know you can walk in the summertime. You can walk all the way across, but the big thing to know is in when ice is off, when the ice is off, this goes for the entire river. When the ice comes off, off the water, if it's a if it's a big ice, the bottom composition of the river, it's going to change because that ice is going to dredge away. If it's a thick ice, it's going to dredge away at all that stuff that's down there. So the, your bottom is constantly changing. So whether there, there might have been a good a good hole the year prior, it might not be there. It might be filled up this year, but then. Next year, there, there, you know, your hole might be in a different location. So that's one thing to always be mindful of when you're walking the river, when you're going to your normal fishing spots, is that if there's a big ice and the ice comes off, all of that, all that stuff moves, and that's say that's the same thing to go with, you know, the walleye run. A lot the walleye run usually goes from, let's say, mid March to the beginning of May. Uh, you know, when ice comes off, the water temperature it rises. Uh, the water level rises between 40 and 50 degrees. The walleye come in. Uh, more walleye come in as the water level rises and as it drops, they they come a little bit farther out, uh, you know, a little bit back in the deeper water. Um, so basically from Jerome Road Rapids to, um, let's just say, Orleans Park, um, from that area around March to April, May, it's usually going to run, you know, uh, three to maybe four and a half, five foot deep. Um, so you're not going to see, when, when you're doing the walleye run, you're not going to see a lot of big boats out there. You're going to see, you know, small guys on John boats, guys on boats like me. Uh, there's there's some hidden, um, like underneath the 470, I'm telling you, it's not hidden anymore. Underneath the 475 bridge, you can put a boat in there. And so you can get between, you can get between Buttonwood and Jerome Road Rapids down in this stretch. This is it right here. You can get down in that area. You can put in over at Orleans Park. You can put in right here. You can put in down here at, um, God, what's that, Maple Street, and you can come in up down into here. But basically, that's all shale. It's all shallow. Uh, in the summertime, that runs super shallow. Like, you can you can literally walk across the water without even getting wet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and like I said, everyone, that's, that's the big wreck area. A lot of people... If they start up at Grand Rapids, if they start in Waterville, they'll come down to Orleans Park. They'll come down to Sidecut Park. They'll come down to, uh, you know, like I said, Maple Street. And then that's where they're going to stop, usually with their recreational stuff. There are people that go down all the way to downtown, uh, but more than likely, a lot of people are going to stop between, go from Grand Rapids down to Perrysburg. And that's usually where, like, the recreational, like, small craft vessel stuff usually stops, river walking and stuff like that. That's usually where it stops. So, on to the next one, and this is pictures uh, that I pulled off the internet for uh, the wall I run, so you can see these guys. These guys are probably, you know, six foot tall. You can see where the water comes up on them. The small boats out there, small boats lined up. Um, you can see how far people are out in the water. And, you know, it, like I said, it runs like three to five foot deep. You're not getting a big boat out there. You're taking a bunch of small boats, uh, you know, fishing 25, 50 yards into the, into the river. Uh, shoulder to shoulder and you know just you can spread out you can spread out along the river we'll go all the way up to Grand Rapids and you're gonna catch fish okay so this part oh, why did I go too far this part I took this this picture uh, this starts actually down in at Maple Street this is the turnpike and then this is this I-75 bridge by the Andersons if you know what I'm talking about so basically this area um, this is going to be all shale. This is going to be mud. Shale and mud is what makes up this part of the river. Um, 
basically at Maple Street is where you're going to start getting your pleasure boaters again. You're going to get your big pontoon boats. Um, you will get your fishing boats in there. You will get stuff like that, but then you're going to see your speed boats. You're going to see your wakeboarders. You're going to see your jet skis. Um, and then they run this stretch of the river. Okay, so then they run this stretch. It gets pretty deep. It runs about uh, eight foot again. And then down here, uh, right in this area, you know, you're going to get your marinas. On the north side, you're going to get another marina. Uh, this is the Rossford Marina. And then you got, uh, like, the, the Toledo Zoo is somewhere in this area. And then, you know, you have all the marinas along here. And that's when you get your bigger boats to come in. And, you know, those guys, they're playing in that part of the river. The pontoon boats, they're playing in that part of the river. And then you got your big boats that are coming in down there and then going out towards the lake. You can fish in that area. We have fished in that area. There's actually really good fishing in that area. Um, but it's a kind of a different different kind of fishing. Some, I mean, that fishing down there, it depends. Um, sometimes you can fish straight on the bottom. Sometimes your fishing is suspended. Sometimes if you're going smallly fishing along the islands, um, you know, you're throwing inline spinners and wake baits and stuff like that, and you can catch catch fish down in there. But in this stretch, you're gonna you're be, you're definitely gonna find more more pleasure boaters. You will, like I said, you will see your fishing boats, your smaller fishing boats. But you're gonna find your recreational, uh, larger vessels, your your speed guys coming in through there. And then from here, I, again, once once again, this is the I-75 bridge. This is the mouth of the river right up through here. So you know you got your marinas down through here. Um, and then along he along this north side of the river of the Andersons, you have the big boats. You have the big the big um, boats that run along here, and you have downtown. And obviously, everyone has seen the big boats that run right in through here. That part of the river is dredged out. I have never fished past the I-75 bridge. Once again, I've never fished past the I-75 bridge. My brother has, but I have not. Um, I do know as you get closer, as you do get closer to the to the lake, you are going to catch your bigger fish. You're going to catch perch. You're going to catch. Uh, you're more likely to catch a sturgeon if they're if they're in there. You're more likely to catch, you know, like a 20 pound channel cat. Uh, you're going to catch giant carp in through there. You're going to catch your small, your more, I mean, larger smallies. You're going to catch uh, largemouth bass that are sitting in, you know, the marinas, uh, you know, right in through here, and you know, like I said, your your bigger fish. Um, in Swan Creek in 2012, they pulled out um, a muskie. There are muskie that that are in Lake Erie. You know, they're all they're in the Western Basin. Um, you will find them a lot more along the island reefs. Uh, you hear people catching them on bass gear all the time. You know, 40, 42 inch muskie out there. Um, but they're few and far between. Few and far between in the lake anymore. Um, usually, you're gonna go up to the Detroit River, St. Clair area. Uh, that's where you're going to find more of your, your musky. Um, but you will find a good amount of northerns. Uh, like I said, channel cat perch. You can catch, basically, if it's in the lake from the 75 bridge up to the mouth, you're going to catch You're going to catch the same thing you did earlier, like more upstream. But this downstream, you're going to catch bigger fish. Um, the, the river widens widens it gets deeper they've dredged it out for the big ships so you know you're you're looking at instead of four to eight foot deep you're looking at 30 foot deep 35 foot deep there's sunken power lines down in there and all kinds of things that happen um underneath the water like i said i've never fished down there i've wanted to fish down there um but i, I just haven't yet so then you know like i said then you have you have your pleasure boaters who will go all the way up to the mouth of the river. Um, you know, I've always wanted to put in at Grand Rapids and take a kayak all the way to the mouth of the river. Um, we, fl we floated from, you know, Waterville down to Perrysburg on on rafts. We've done stuff like that, but, um, you know, there are people that do that. You just have to be mindful of the weather on certain days because, like I said, as just like it was between above on the west side of Grand Rapids, when you get west, when you get east of Perrysburg, northeast of Perrysburg, and it, the river turns north, you have to be mindful of your your river conditions, your wind conditions, your other your atmospheric conditions because when that river turns, um, especially if you're in a small craft and you're getting waves and stuff, uh, it can turn you over. And if you're not if you're not careful, you can you can be in for some trouble. Um, but yeah, I mean that's basically it for this slideshow. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. 
um, if you watched all the way through, I, I appreciate it. Uh, we, I will go into um, more detail on certain sections of the river if, if you guys would like. Uh, if you could, leave me a, a comment in the comment section below if you would like to see something more. And thanks for watching. Peace.